the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah we bless God once again for the opportunity the chance to be in the house of the Lord uh, to share the word of the Lord to encourage each other with these uh, gospel with these words of truth uh, for as we say it is in the house of the Lord when we are in trouble it becomes our refuge when we are confused when we are pushed to a corner the best place to go is in the house of the Lord to hear what the Lord is saying. And we want to bless God for according us this opportunity and this forum uh, to hear the word of the Lord. And we have been talking about the, sacri the sacrifice that Jesus made for our sins, the suffering that he went through and the death that he had to die and even the resurrection that he resurrected uh, so that we can be encouraged and we be can be comforted and I have our confidence that if Jesus made it, that means even we that have believed in his name, we are also going to make it. We are more than conquerors. We are going to win. He won the battle for us. And we want to appreciate uh, the Lord for that. And uh, not too long ago, celebrating the Passover, the, the, the suffering, the death, and even uh, the barrier and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is an encouragement that our hope, the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, verse number 19, that if, then, if in this life only, and this is why Jesus had to resurrect, uh, so that we can know that our hope is not only in this life, our hope is even after, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. If Jesus never is selected, if Jesus died and never, never lost from the grave, then our hope would be we would be the most miserable individuals. But the fact that he is selected, then it means that me and you, we have a future, we have a, a confidence that even though this body may perish like he is, the natural Adamic body that God had uh, had, uh, had created or given for him or to him. Uh, we read a first of scripture in the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and verse number 5, not too long ago. And the Bible says, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and verse number 5, he said, uh, he said uh, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Now, this I would like you to note, it is the natural Adamic body. It is not the divine nature of Jesus Christ it is referring to the Adamic nature. Uh, that, and that body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That is why it had to be laid down. Uh, this flesh and blood cannot, this flesh that Jesus was given uh, through Mary could not inherit the kingdom of God. And we as God's people, we do know 
uh, that through the preaching of the word of God that this body cannot inherit the kingdom of God and a time will come as Jesus laid down this body, that body that had prepared for him so that he can be clothed with an immortal body, then even us will have to go through the process. We'll have to go through the process because the Bible is saying in the book of 1 Corinthians, we were there, but now a different first of scripture, 1 Corinthians, the 15th uh, chapter, and first number, first number 50, the scripture says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus, when the time came for him to go back to his father, then he had to lay down this body, the body of flesh. That is called flesh and blood. The body that could not, it was corruptible. It was to decay. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, exposed to pain and, and it was exposed to death. So this body cannot inherit the kingdom of God and we, as the progeny of Adam, we inherited a body from Adam which is called now the Adamic nature, uh, which now we have to lay down this body and even the character, the behavior has to be laid down so that we can be clothed with another body. So the, the Bible is saying, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That means that that body that is fragile, uh, it is weak, and also it is subject to pain and death. Uh, so as long as we are in this body, then, then this body we are becoming weak, uh, fragile, and even exposed and subject to pain and death. And that is what we are talking about, we being born. The Bible says in the book of, first, in the book of John, the first chapter and first number 13, uh, there the Bible is saying, which were born not of blood, or nor of the will of the flesh. Now look at that, there are two kind of births like right there, uh, that John is talking about. One is the birth that was of the blood, and also of the flesh, and the other birth is of the will of God. So you find it is that now that which we inherited from Adam, it is the bread, fresh and blood. Fresh and blood that cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That is why I'm showing you why Jesus had to die. And why Jesus had to lay down this body so that he can be laced up with an immortal body. And that was a sign and it was a type and showing us an, as an example, even as we have to go through a change. If we are going to inherit the kingdom of God, then this flesh and blood, that which we inherited, that which we acquired from Adam and the children of Israel or the Jews, they prided themselves being the descendants of Adam and they thought they never needed Jesus Christ. They never needed the gospel because they thought they were going to walk into the kingdom of God the way they were. And that is why even when Jesus uh, tried to speak to them and preach to them, they said in Matthew, the third chapter and verse number nine, they said that we have Abraham to our father. In other words, I th they, and they said, and think not, Jesus is telling them, and think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. Now that is the pride, that is what they relied on. But they didn't know what they inherited from Abraham was flesh and blood. There was nothing spiritual that they inherited from Abraham. And if they were going to inherit the kingdom of God, then they needed there to be a change. Because the flesh and blood that they inherited from Adam was not going to guarantee them eternal life. And Abraham was also a seed of Adam. And being a seed of Adam, the Bible is saying that Adam was earthly. First Corinthians, we go back again to first, first Corinthians, the 15th chapter and verse number 47. The scripture is saying, though they prided in them being the seed of Abraham, uh, they, they, they forgot that what they inherited was this flesh and blood, which is a fragile, weak, subject to pain and death, and it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And you and me, we need to understand that that is why Jesus had to die, uh, so that this body can be changed. The body that had been made and created for him, the Adamic body, can be laid down so that he can be reselected with an immortal body, a body that cannot 
die. A body that now can, can have the glory of God upon it. So the Bible is saying, for the first man is of the earth. Of, of the earth. That is Adam. He was of the earth. And whatever we inherited from him was just uh, flesh and blood. Which cannot inherit the kingdom of God. For the, the first man is of the earth. Which is earthly. That means flesh and blood. There is nothing spiritual. But we inherited from Adam. This body without the gospel. This body without the spirit of God. Is, cannot, it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that is why there must be a change. That is why now Jesus, he didn't walk. He didn't just wake up and say, I am going to my father. No, he had to lay down this body. So that he can be laced up in an immortal body. A body that is not subject to corruption. That can inherit the kingdom of God. First number 48. The scripture says, as is the earthly. Now as Adam was earthly. Such are they also that are earthy. Now that means that we are the seed of Adam. And being the seed of Adam, that means we inherited that, uh, that, uh, that flesh and blood. That earthliness. Corruption. A body that is uh, subject to death, pain, and suffering. That is why even up to today, it doesn't matter how much you speak in other tongues. Sometimes you feel pain in your body because it is flesh and blood. It is still flesh and blood and subject to pain and death. Because this body doesn't matter how spiritual and righteous you are. This body has to be laid down. Jesus being the son of God. He was not going to inherit the kingdom of God with that body. That is why now the necessity of him dying and being buried. So that this Adamic body, the flesh and blood, can be left on the ground and in the, hell, in, in, in the grave so that he can least select with another body. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And all what we inherited from Adam, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. That is me and you. This body. That is why Genesis, the fifth chapter and verse number three, when Adam had his son and Adam lived a hundred and that years and begot a son in his, listen to this, underline that, in his own likeness. And after his image, in his own likeness, that is fresh and blood. That is what we inherited from Adam. Fresh and blood. That is, he begot a son in his own likeness and after his own image. That is what Adam passed over to his children. And we happen to be the children of Adam. But we have to see the change. That is why Jesus had came to show us the way. That the way to the kingdom of God, then this flesh and blood has to be changed. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If we want to go to the kingdom of God, inherit the kingdom of God, the Lord, now, no, it is not in this flesh and blood that Adam passed over to us. So he, he, gave, he, gave, he begot a son in his own likeness and in his own image. John, the third chapter and verse number six, the scripture says that which is born of the flesh. And we were born of the flesh in the natural we became the seed of Adam in the natural. And that is what Adam passed over to us. Showing you why Jesus had to die. Showing you why there must have been a change for him to go back to his father. And that he showed me and you the way to the kingdom of heaven. Is that this has to be changed. And Jesus changed these old body fresh and blood and he was glorified and given another body called immortal body that cannot die but this it doesn't matter how much i speak in other tongues it doesn't matter how righteous and how godly i am i am still exposed to pain and corruption of this flesh and ultimately death because this cannot inherit the kingdom of god 
So that tells me death to a child of God is not by itself an end, but it is a process and a means to another destiny. Praise be to Jesus. So we got these in First Peter, the first chapter, and verse number 23. The scripture says, First Peter, it says, being born again, not of, now listen, being born again, that means there was another birth. The first birth was of corruptible seed. A corruptible seed that what we inherited was now corruption, flesh and blood. That which was could not, it was not permanent. It could not endure forever. In other words, it, all what it, it produced was decay and it resulted into death. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you find a child of God in that state. You find an individual in that state where the, even Jesus, when he was in that state, before he changed his body, this Adamic nature that God had prepared, but a body has thou prepared me. That body was feeling the pain. And Jesus said at one point, he said, Matthew the 26th chapter and verse number 37, he said, uh, first of scripture right there, and he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and began, this is Jesus Christ, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. That is no divine nature. That is the body that God had prepared for him. That was the body that I have like myself I have and ultimately exposed to death. That is why Jesus will feel pain before the resurrection, before he died. He was having, he could feel hungry like everybody else would feel hungry. Praise the name of the Lord. He, 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 he felt hungry one day as he was walking in the field and he saw a fig tree and thinking he was going to get some figs and eat. Then going there, there were no fruits and he cast the tree. Why? Because he was hungry. Because he was in this flesh and blood. But this flesh and blood, we are talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ, not the divinity of Jesus Christ, not the divine nature, but the human nature that Jesus Christ had. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And a time had to come for Jesus to lay it down so that he can be reselected with an immortal body, spiritual body that can inherit the kingdom of God. And began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse number 38. And the scripture says, Then said he, I said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly or exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Now that is not the divine nature, that is the flesh and blood. Because Jesus knew and ultimately he had to lay down that flesh and blood because they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood, there must be a change. There must be a change. Lay down this flesh and blood and that is the lesson we are getting also in the death of Jesus Christ. What he was doing, he was laying down the flesh and blood, the Adamic nature, the Adamic body. So that now he can be ready to go into the kingdom of God. He was so sorrowful until he said, Matthew 27 and 46, he says, he said, even he cried, why have you forsaken me? He felt like he was just by himself because of the heaviness, the pain, the sorrowfulness. Like many times you as a child of God, you're exposed to that. What is making you to feel like that? It is the flesh and blood. That which you inherited from Adam. That is why you feel hungry. That is why you feel pain. That is why you fear death. Because you know this cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Fresh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Praise be to Jesus. As a child of God. You must understand. Jesus didn't just die. But he was showing us the way. That the way to the kingdom of heaven is that this flesh and blood has to be laid down. There must be a change. 
There must be a change of this life, this flesh and blood, and a child of God. Job said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Job, the 14th chapter, and verse number 4. I believe it should be. Who can bring, that is it. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And he said, not even one. It is not easy. It has to take God. It has to take God to change our nature. And that is why we have the gospel. That is why we have this message, saints of God, so that you can be able to go through that transformation of that process of change, both spiritual and even in the natural. This body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The spirit and whatever we inherited from Adam cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So there is a cry. Jesus said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because she was exceeding sorrowful. And even unto death. Because she was still in this body. That is why 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and verse number 2, the scripture says, Second uh, Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and verse number two. Uh, there's a verse of scripture right there. For in this, now in this body, in this, that is why there is pain sometimes in your body. And you groan. For in this we groan, in this body, honestly, desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. That is the, now the, the glorious covering the body that is immortal that cannot uh, is not subject to death and pain but as long as we in this body there is groaning jesus was groaning in the garden of the gets money he was said oh my spirit is sorrowful i'm exceeding sorrowful even heavy unto death because he was feeling the weight he was feeling the pain at this point, Jesus had not been glorified. He was not yet having the divine nature. He was still having the Adamic nature, which he had now to take it to the grave and is buried there. And then he be raised up again with a glorious, immortal body. A body that can now inherit the kingdom of God. So death is not a judgment as it were to a child of God, but it's a process of being changed. Jesus was being changed because flesh and blood could not inherit the kingdom of God. And knowing that, he then he had, he had now to groan. For in this we've grown earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with an, our house, which is from heaven. In other words, there is that desire. Every time you feel that pain, every time you feel that sorrowfulness, every time you feel threatened by things of this life, there is that cry, there's that desire that you may lay this down, that it can be laid up. And I'm talking about both natural, and physical, and spiritual. There must be a transformation. There must be a change because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. First number four, the scripture says, uh, uh, first number four, for we that are in this tabernacle, this body, do groan. Being burdened. You know, we are, we are groaning. Being burdened. There is that prayer. There is you, you want to serve God. You want to live. You want to live happily. But once in a while you feel pain in your body. Once in a while there is sorrowfulness in your body. Then you desire. You say I'm looking for that day. And that is why we said. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. Then we have all men most miserable. But I thank God it is not only in this life. Soon and very soon we are going to witness a change. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, he said, that mortality, death. That death, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now look at that. There must be a change. Mortality, that is death. Pain, sorrow can be swallowed up. Praise the name of the Lord. We, 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 we have to witness that in the life of a child of God. 
The gospel comes in to change, to translate this child of God, to change them. To take away the Adamic nature and they have the godly, divine nature. And this has to go and to happen to every child of God that will inherit the kingdom of God. And there are two ways that will happen and one is death. Natural death. Physical death. That is why back to first Colin the 15th chapter and first number 51 the scripture is saying because we are groaning. Behold I show you a mystery and it's a mystery. Paul said this is a mystery like maybe somebody may not be understanding what we are talking about even today. It's a mystery. He said we shall not all sleep. Now that sleep it is not the sleep that we sleep in the evening or at night. But this sleep is the sleep of death. And Paul said, not everybody that is going to sleep the sleep of death, not every child of God that is going to die before the return of Jesus Christ. No, there are some that will be alive when Jesus will be coming back again. There was a Peter when he was told, feed my sheep. Then he looked around in the book of John the 21st chapter and verse number 20. The scripture says, Then Peter turned about and seeth the, the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, what is he that, uh, who, which is he that betrayed thee? Verse number 21. Peter seeing him uh, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall these men do? Now they fall into John. What will these men do? Because for me, you have told me, I'll feed the sheep. What about John, the man that is following us? What is his, his work? What is his duty? But I thank God for what Jesus said, verse number 22. Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tally till I come. Now, that tells you when Jesus will be coming, there will be some individuals that will be still walking on the face of the earth. There are still some saints of God that will still be preaching this gospel and witnessing about the Savior. But John, John eventually died. John eventually died. But I'm showing that to tell you. I'm leading that first to, to tell you. Jesus also knew by the time, the time, at the time you'll be coming back to this other again for the church, there will be some saints of God still waiting, still preaching. That telling is to they were still alive. And to sleep, I think, uh, uh, first Corinthians, I think we were there. But if we can lead first number four, uh, is it first number four, first number five that I want? Uh, there's a, a first of scripture that I do want lie there. Uh, first number six, uh, second first Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 15th chapter, and first number six, still talking about the sleep of death and them that will remain. First Corinthians, this, this 15th chapter, and first number 6. It's saying, and after that he was seen uh, of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain. That is, if what is it to you if I say he remain? He tally until I come. I'm wishing that first of scripture tell you that there's some people that will be alive and others will be dead the sleep of death he said he said uh, of whom the greater part remain until unto this present time but some are fallen asleep that is dying so we are not all of us going to die i was just showing you that to say we are not all going to die but you know what back to first number 51 of the same book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I'm showing you the lesson and the example that Jesus showed to the believers. When he died, he said, this has to happen for every child of God, for every believer. Because flesh and blood that they inherited from Adam cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So death becomes a means of transformation or a means of change. He said, we shall not all die, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Underline that if you are reading your Bible, we shall all be changed. Even you that is listening to me, 
if Jesus had to be changed, who is the captain of our salvation, who is the savior of the world, then we that are his followers, we that are his disciples, then we must be changed. We must be changed. We shall all be changed. Whether it is going to be by death, or whether it is going to be an instantaneous moment where we'll have a transformation in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Them that are going to be alive at the return of Jesus Christ, even them, they are going to be changed. Death then becomes a change, a means of change. That is what Jesus is saying. Death could not hold him. Grave could not hold him because it was a process. For him to sit at the right hand of God, then he had to go through that change. He had to lay down this. I'm showing you the lesson that we learn at the death of Jesus Christ and at his selection. That when he was selecting, he selected with an immortal body. We said, though so that this mortality should be swallowed up with, by life, should be swallowed up. So that when you are buried, when we bury, and I'm talking about both physical and natural and also spiritual, there must be a transformation. Praise the name of the Lord. So you'll find a saying, but we shall all be changed. Then some will, like we have many, many of God's people that are lying in the grave today. Or what they did was to lay down these uh, flesh and blood and they are waiting for the trump of God when they will select and they will select with immortality. They will have laid down the flesh and blood. They will, they will, they let me read first number 42 of the same book. You find this body when it is so also it is the selection of the dead. This body is sown in corruption. The body of Jesus Christ was taken to the grave, a corrupt body. It is, it, is, it is shown in corruption. It is laced in, in corruption. That is a change. They are obit, but we shall all be changed. That is the lesson we are getting from the death of Jesus Christ and his selection. He died and got buried having this corruption. Having this uh, Adamic body, flesh and blood, which cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and for him to sit under at the right hand of God, then he had to lay down the flesh and blood and have incorruption. Verse number 40, 43. It is sown in dishonor. It is laced in glory. That's what we are talking about. And that is the lesson we are getting from the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was sown or taken to the grave, buried in dishonor. Nobody wanted to be near it. Nobody wanted to be recognized with it. But it is laced in glory. It is shown a son in weakness, that which we received from Adam, fragile, weak, corrupt, subject to decaying and death. It is laced in power. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the destiny of every child of God. That is the destiny of every believer. First number 44, that is what we are talking about. It is shown in an, in, it is shown a natural body. That's natural, the Adamic nature. It is laced, a spiritual body. A body that is immortal, cannot die anymore. It has the glory of God. It can carry the anointing of God. It is for permanent and forever it is eternal not subject anymore to death it is sown a natural body it is laced a spiritual body he said there is a natural body and there is also a spiritual body now this what we receive from adam is natural body 
What we receive from Jesus Christ is spiritual body. When we have the spirit of God, when we have this gospel and we have believed and we are infilled by the spirit of God, we are filled by the anointing of God, then we have now this body being quickened. I said both the natural and the spiritual part of it. As a child of God, that is why we thank God for the church. The death, the body, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was showing us the way. If we want to inherit the kingdom of God, then flesh and blood cannot. Hallelujah. It cannot. Philippians, the third chapter, and verse number 21, the scripture says, uh, Philippians, the third chapter, so who, who, uh, verse number 20, the scripture says, uh, for our conversation is in heaven, our lifestyle. What we are looking for is in heaven, the kingdom of God. What we are looking forward for to inherit is the kingdom of God. For our conversation, our mind, our thoughts are in the kingdom of heaven, are in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 21, who shall change our vile body. It has to be changed. Praise the name of the Lord. And as I said, some, it is, they have to, they will die, as many have already died. And they are waiting for that trump of God. They are awakening, where they will be awakened from the grave, and they will be having immortality. They will be having the same body that Jesus is selected in. The same glory. And them of us that remain, we are going to be changed. You are going to be changed. So death, both spiritual and natural, it is not something that a child of God will say, why did it happen? No, it is a process of changing. That is what we are learning from Jesus Christ. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. His body now the one he is selected in. The glorious body. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a glorious body. He was selected in a glorious body. But it be. That it be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself so he becomes now the king of kings the lord of lords he can subdue praise the name of the lord we are talking about the death of jesus christ was telling us that this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god it cannot glorify god neither can it be glorified praise the name of the lord it has to be changed that we may be fashioned like unto his glorious body as a child of God when you follow Jesus. When you believe in this gospel, my brother, you are put in a process of transformation from glory. Second Corinthians, that chapter, verse number 18, it says it's from glory to glory. But we all, with open face, beholding, as it in a grass, the glory of the Lord are changed. Look at that, changed. So this changing, it is start somewhere when you start believing the gospel. When God adds you to the church and gives you a true ministry where the word of God is being preached, then you are now put on that line where gradually you are being changed. Not only waiting for that ultimate day of your death, but gradually when you received Jesus Christ, you start now going through a transformation. You start now going through a change. So that ultimately when you die, the final death, then you say, I lay down this body. So that I can lay it again, being a glorious body. So that is the importance of the truth. That is the importance of the gospel. And it changes you. And it puts you on a highway. And it puts you in a process where you are being changed. Gradually from glory, the Bible is saying, but we all, with open face, beholding us in a grass, the glory of the Lord, 
are changed into the same image from glory to glory. It is from glory to glory. It is now that I'm not the way I was when I believed. There must be some change. And you are not the way you, you started the way you, the way you were when you started. There's some change. There's some growth. There's some maturity. Spiritual growth. Praise the name of the Lord. There, there is a, a change even in your character. There's a change even in your talk. There's a change even in your... Paul said, uh, 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter, I believe, verse number 11, when I was a child in the faith, when I was a child, when I, ha I had just come to the house of God, there was no much change. I was still in this Adamic nature, flesh and blood, which cannot glorify God, which cannot be glorified by God. When I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, and I also thought as a child. Now look at that. This is somebody who is still in this flesh and blood that cannot glorify God. The flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But God brings this child of God into the church. So that now they can be put in a process of perpetual, continuous growth. There must be growth and change. So that now, they, the more they grow, the more they mature, the more they start now behaving as a child of God, knowing what is good and what is not good. Because iniquity shall not rise up the second time, the Bible says. So as a child of God, you find God, when he loves you, he puts you in a ministry where you are put in a program of change. And this program of change is through the word of God. So Paul, he was a persecutor of his church. He hated the, the saints of God. That was flesh and blood. But when he came to church, being young then, he had to be put in that process. Then he started now understanding the word of God. But he said, now when I was a child in the faith, I spake as a child. I understood because I was in the flesh and blood. I thought as a child there was no spiritual maturity. But when I became a man in the things of God, he is no longer a child. I put away childish things. That is, things are, that are the rusts of this flesh. I'm no longer now doing things at the whims of my feelings. I'm no longer now doing things to satisfy my feelings. No, I'm saying as a child of God, then I know how to discern between God, both good and evil. Because it has to die. This flesh has to die. What we inherited from Adam, it has to die spiritually and ultimately has to die naturally. This body, like Jesus, had to, to, had to die and it was buried. Then it was lifted up. It was laced for him to sit. At the light hand of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. He had to. And we as God's people, we have for him to sit there. The Bible says, we'll come back to uh, uh, Corinthians, uh, Acts the second chapter and verse number 20, 23. It says, him, that is Jesus Christ, being delivered by the determinate counsel. And for a knowledge of God, you have taken by wicked hands and have crucified and slain him. In other words, they killed him. But they did know they were agents that God had already put in place. But they were going to facilitate to be used of God as agents to achieve that which God had determined about Jesus Christ. And you as a child of God, there are many people along the highway that God has put on the that highway that you're walking in. And all of them, they have been put there to facilitate the purpose of God over your life. For them, they may think it is evil for you. For them, they may think they are finishing you or they are bringing you down. But they don't know they are helping and facilitating the purpose of God over your life. The kings of the world and the rulers. 
they thought they were getting lead of Jesus Christ. But they didn't know they were facilitating. They didn't know they were fulfilling the purpose of God upon Jesus Christ that he was now ready to occupy the light hand of his father. And for that to be done, then he had to lay down the flesh and blood. And if there are some people that will bring your way to get lit of this flesh and blood. In being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands has crucified and slain. First number 24, and after that, after you crucified him and you slain him, whom God have laced up. And every experience, my brother, my sister, but came your way with an intention of destroying you, annihilating you, God of heaven is going to lace you up again out of it. And you're going to be selected a better child of God, be it in the, in the, we are talking about the spiritual part of it. God is going to select you. That experience that you thought, Jesus said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? And that experience that you thought, God has forgotten you. God has forsaken you. That experience will be over and God will raise you up again, a better child of God. That experience, it was good for you because it is making you a better child of God. It is making you a mature child of God. It is making you a spiritual child of God. Having the fear of God in their hearts. The man, the enemy, David, Joseph said, For you, you thought it evil for me. But God turned it out to be for my good. And anything that your enemy has planned evil against you, they may have meant it evil, they may have planned to hurt you, but God will turn it around for your good. They thought they were finishing and getting rid of Jesus Christ, but God turned that out to be for his good. Whom God, after they killed him, buried him, whom God laced up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it, and there is no power in hell. There is no power of grace that can hold a child of God. No power of devil, no power of the enemy can hold a child of God when a time comes for them to occupy their rightful position. For their time, when their time comes for them to be exalted by God, no power, no authority could hold Jesus Christ in the grave. Having loosed the pains of death. And as Jesus, God delivered him from that power. God will deliver you from that power, my sister, that is holding you back. God will, hold, will deliver you and loose you from that power, my brother, that is keeping you down. Because if that power was not able to hold on Jesus Christ in the grave, even in your current state as a child of God, where the devil has put you or the enemy has put you, they don't have no power to hold you any longer there. And the time and the fullness of time, God will speak life into that condition. And Jesus was delivered from the hold. But when he is coming out, he is coming a glorious child of God. He is coming out with glory. Let it to inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And God laced up Jesus. First number 32. It's the same book of Acts, the second chapter. This Jesus have God laced up. Look at that. It is God. It is no man. It is God that is going to lace you up. That condition that was supposed to finish you, bury you for good. After three days, Jesus was out. And after your that day, my brother, you'll be out. Sister, on the that day, you'll be out as some of you. You are light in your that day. 
You are light on a Sunday morning and this happens to be your that day and you are getting out of that condition that has been holding you back, that has been holding you in that state and you are getting out of it because God is raising you up and you are waking up a glorious, victorious child of God and God will introduce you back again to the same world. And God will say, this is my son. You thought evil against him, but I have turned that evil into good. Praise the name of the Lord. You meant it for evil. Jeff, Joseph said to his brothers in Acts in Genesis, the fifth chapter and verse number 20, but as for you, and that is your enemies, that is people that don't wish you well, they thought evil against you, but God, that evil that they has schemed, that evil they had planned. That evil they had talked about to hurt you. God has turned it for your good. But God meant it unto good. And God, they thought they were finishing Jesus by killing him. But God lays him up back to Acts, the second chapter, verse number 32. God turned the whole thing upside down. Then Jesus, this Jesus, have God laced up. Wherefore we are all witnesses. Peter uh, is saying we are witnesses. We are not following cunningly devised fables. But we were witnesses of the very things we are telling you. And I want to tell you my brother, my sister. I am a witness of what God can do. I am a partaker of what God can do. And I know some of you, you are a partaker and a witness of what God can do. And you can shout a big amen by lighting it down there. And you that can be able to shout, you can shout and say a big amen. Because you are a witness of what God can do. And if we did it yesterday... If he did it for Jesus, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. And when he was raised up, verse number 33, the Bible says, therefore, you know, after being raised up, he doesn't remain in the same state. He doesn't go to the same state and level of flesh and blood. No. He is now led to inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, flesh and blood has been buried. The body was shown, was sown in dishonor. It is laced up in glory and in power. It was sown a natural body. It is laced a spiritual body. Praise the name of the Lord. It was sown a corrupt body. It is laced up in corrupt body. Now Jesus is laced. And you are going to lace up my sister. You are going to lace up my brother. Whatever state it is. We talked about the natural death. That is coming. The Bible says the living know they will die. You know that. But this death of a child of God. It is not uh, by itself the end. But it is a means to our destiny. To be changed. We shall all be changed. But we are talking also the spiritual. We are talking about the current life status of you, of you, wherever you are. God, as long as you are a believer, you, God said, therefore being by the light hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. The promise. So when he was raised from the dead, he never remained the same old Jesus Christ, but now he has the Spirit of God. Not only the Spirit of God, but He is seated. He is exalted. Seated at the light hand of God. And that condition, my brother, my sister, you are going through, it is preparing you for your possession of inheritance. It is preparing you. And it was preparing you because some of you, very soon you are getting out of it. From now, you are stepping out of it. A time came, Jesus got out of the grave. And some of you, you are now out of that situation and God is leading you to another state where you can now be exalted and occupy your possession of blessings. And God exalted him. And if this spirit that Jesus received in Romans, the 8th chapter, verse number 11, if this spirit that lays up Jesus Christ. 
dwell in you. And I know you as a child of God, you say, I have the spirit of God. With an evidence of speaking in other tongues. And if this spirit of him that lays up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So we are talking about the spiritual awakening. A spiritual resurrection. If this spirit dwell in you, he that lays up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So that now the glory of God, you don't have now to wait until the final death, but even lie now spiritually, this God can revive you. And wherever you are going, you have the spirit of God and you are walking in the newness of life. Praise be to Jesus. You are walking in the newness of life. You have the spirit of God. You have the power of God. The scripture says that now we be partakers of the same glory, of the same anointing. Because we have the same spirit. And the Bible says, Jesus, when he'll be coming, First John, the third chapter, first number one. First John, the third chapter, and first number one. Behold, what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us. But we should be called the sons of God. Are you a son of God? Therefore he said, the word, the, this, the, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. First number two. That's what I want. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But there is one thing we are confident. There is one thing that we know. That when he shall appear. We shall be like him. The same glory. The same spirit. When he shall appear. We shall be like him. Why? Because this flesh and blood. Will have been buried. Both the spiritual and the physical, natural. And as this time, we are dealing with the spiritual. This man, Paul said, I die daily. Dying daily, it is the, the Adamic influence, the Adamic spirit that was dying day by day. Every time he listened to the gospel, Paul was in the process of dying. I die daily. And as a child of God, you die daily. You kill. It is called the beast. It's called the beast. In the book of uh, Proverbs, the ninth chapter, wisdom, verse number one, have built her house. She have hewed out her seven pillars. Verse number two, she have killed her beast. She have killed her beast. That is the child of God dying daily by this gospel. Every this wisdom, the knowledge of the word of God, keep on killing this beast, the Adamic nature, the flesh and blood. Every time you come to the house of God, then these seven pillars that the child of God is built upon kills the beast, the Adamic body. The Adamic nature, flesh and blood. Paul said, I die daily. Praise the name of the Lord. So the more we are preaching, then that beast is dying. The more we are preaching, that beast is dying. So that when Jesus will appear, we shall be like him. Praise the name of the Lord. The book of Colossians, the third chapter and verse number four, when Christ who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. We shall appear with Jesus Christ, with him in glory. As a child of God. So that, that, so that there can be a change. And I say this change is both natural, physical, and also spiritual. And the natural these will be at the death the day of dying will have that change. Will be buried a, 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 a mortal body. Will be buried a dishonor body. Corrupt body. But it will be the time of this election. It will be laced 
a spiritual body, an incorruptible body, an immortal body, leading to inhale the kingdom of God. In the spiritual, we are talking about uh, the, the conversation, the lifestyle. When I was a child, when I didn't know God, I served things that by nature were no God. Because I was uh, uh, in this uh, spirit that I received from Adam. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Colossians, the second chapter, and verse number 12. Scripture says that we are buried. Listen to this now. When you believe in Jesus Christ, this is the, the spiritual change. Remember we said, but we shall all be changed. The natural and the spiritual, we shall be all be changed. We are now we are talking about the spiritual, but buried with him in baptism. When you have a proper scriptural water baptism, after you believe, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Water baptism that is scriptural, it is typified or symbolic of the birth of the death and the body of Jesus Christ. When we submerge you into water, that is why proper water baptism, it is not sprinkling. It is to submerge. It is to bury. You are buried. When you are a believer, then it is a sign. When you are buried into water, you are giving a sign to men that are witnessing and even to yourself that you have been buried. And when we are raising you up from the water, we are raising you up a transformed, changed child of God. You have left the Adamic nature, the Adamic influence in the grave, which is the pool, which is the baptistry. You have left your nature down there and you are being laced up again. A new creature, a child of God, that have now no flesh and blood, but they are now being guided by the Spirit of God. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. This is by faith. You believed. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark the 16th chapter and verse number 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. In other words, shall be transformed. There will be a change. So when we bury you, it is a type of the burial ceremony. We are burying the old, corrupt, Adamic nature in the pool, in the water. Then we will select it. But when we are selecting this child of God, he is not only selectly selecting, having the same old, corrupt, deceived, fallen nature. He is reselecting with a new nature, and that is a changed child of God. He is now a born-again Christian. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That is what we are talking about. We shall all be changed. And I'm talking specifically, not now the final physical change, but I'm talking about the spiritual. You are still alive, walking on this life, on this earth. But you have been buried at the same time, you have been selected. And when you are being laced up, back to, back to Colossians, the second chapter, verse number 12, you are changed, man. We shall all be changed. That is the importance of water baptism. It's symbolic. It is a type of the death of Jesus Christ. Where he died and he was buried and after three days he was laced up again. A new man. Having glory. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Who have God laced him from the dead. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the reason why we talk about the birth, the, the, the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is symbolic. It was pointing to our own death, both spiritual Killing this beast 
killing these Adamic nature, corrupt, frail and weak, and we bullied and we selected being glorified. Hebrew, Romans, the sixth chapter, and verse number four. The scriptures say, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That is why as a child of God, if you have not been baptized, proper scriptural water baptism, you have not yet buried the old Adamic nature. It need to be buried, symbolic. It will have to be buried in that pool, in that baptismal Then when the preacher man is leasing you out of the pool, it is equated in God leasing up Jesus out of the grave. And when he was laced up out of the grave, he left the Adamic flesh and blood nature in the grave and he was clothed with a new body. That is immortal. That is glorious. And when this preacher is lacing you up, the old fallen nature is left there in the spiritual, in the water, and you are lifted up, you are laced again, a new creature. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That, listen to this, that as Christ was laced up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. You as a child of God, after you have believed, after you have been baptized, then you are laced up from the dead as it were spiritually. And you walk in the newness of life. So when you believe in God, he that believeth then is baptized. And we bury you, then we lace you. Then spiritually you are born again. To them, when you are walking, now you have been born again. John, the first chapter, and first number 13. We were there, the scripture says, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of the will of man, uh, uh, nor of the will of man, but it is the will of God. You are born of the will of God. That means you are now born again. You have buried the flesh. Remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And here in the natural and also in the spiritual, there must be a change. As we wait for the final change, where this body will be clothed with immortality, in the spiritual, as I believe the word of God, then the human nature, character that I have, that I inherited from Adam, it has also to be buried and I be selected again in the spiritual. And I walk in the newness of life. That is the lesson that we got from the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is one of the lessons. There are many lessons. That is one of the lessons Jesus gave us an example. He gave us an example. He showed us the way. How to inherit the kingdom of God in the physical will have ultimately to lay down this body, flesh and blood. We lay it so that we can be laced up with an immortal, glorious body like he was. In the spiritual, when we are buried in water, we are laying down these character, behavior, the lusts of the flesh, and we bury them in that grave, the baptismal. And when the preacher man is lacing me up, I have left all that corruptible nature in the water and I now start walking in the newness of life. May God bless you. May you continue holding on on this word. And God will put you in a position, I said, no pain, no suffering, no death could have hindered Jesus Christ from ascending to the position of his destiny. Now I want to tell you, no pain, no suffering, no frustration is going to stop you from ascending to the position of your destiny. Soon and very soon, my brother, you'll be occupying your rightful position because God is saying that death, whether spiritual, 
is not going uh, to stop you. He is going to exalt you. He'll put you. Men may think it for evil, but God meant it for good. Men may thought that they have finished you, never to be seen again, but soon they are going to see you walking in the streets of your town. They soon they are going to see you in the marketplace, uh, doing your business, uh, having the favor of God and the covering of God over your life, more glorified and more favored of God over your life. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what I'm speaking to your life right now. That where the devil put you yesterday, he will come today, he will find out you're already out. When the soldiers came in the day, the following morning, uh, to check out on the grave of Jesus Christ at the tomb, they found out he is no longer there. And your enemies will be surprised, my brother, when they come after two days, when they come after three days, uh, thinking you're still in the same position and the same place that they left you, they will find out God has already moved you and you are glorified and you are walking in the newness of life. They are going to be shocked. They are going to be amazed until they start coining a story. Go and tell the people. Go and tell Herod. Go and tell the rulers that his disciples came and st stole his body. And your enemies will come and say, no, you compromised your faith. Uh, you compromised. You had a godfather. My brother, you didn't have a godfather walking on shoe leather. Oh, what you had was our Father who is in heaven, who came for your rescue. Jesus never needed a Godfather. Jesus needed the Father and the Creator of the heavens and the earth, who rolled away the stone. And God will roll away the stone and break every chain where you have been locked in. And you are going to walk in victory and liberty. In Jesus' mighty name, I speak this to you, my brother, my sister. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. Don't give up. Don't cut and run. Don't surrender. Don't throw your hands off in air as a gesture of surrender. No. Wait on the Lord. He is coming. On the that day, the stone was rolled away. In your that day, the stone will be rolled away. In the that day, the chains of the grave will be broken. And you're going to walk in victory. Because you are a child of God, ready to walk in the newness of life. God bless you. Lift up your hands and I bless your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewers. I speak this anointing that I feel right like now upon them. Some of them, they may have given up, almost given, given up. Some of them, they have already maybe surrendered to fate. But God, I know their that day is at hand. And they are going to get out of that state, Jehovah. Because the angels of heaven have been commissioned by you to roll away the stones and, and to open the prison bars of Jehovah that they may walk in victory and they may walk in the newness of life. Jehovah God, that address by which the devil had put them and their enemy had praised them. God Almighty, you are changing it line now. In the name of Jesus, they may have been called failures. Uh, they may have been called uh, and nobody is, oh God Almighty. But Father, through this anointing, you are changing that physical heart raiser. And you're saying they are glorified. They are blessed. And they are favored of God. And your Father, their enemies will see the good hand of the Lord over their lives. And they will say, indeed, God is with them. Father God, I pray, bless them. I pray that God, you may usher them into the place of their destiny. In the praise of their possession. In the name of Jesus, let the good hand of the Lord guide them. Father, as we have learned, but no pain, no suffering, no death could have stopped Jesus Christ from ascending to his destiny. Father, no, nothing that the children of God are going through that is going to stop them from the praise of their destiny. In the name of Jesus, you will ultimately put them there. In the name of Jesus, you will praise them there, Jehovah. In the mighty name of the Lord, I speak healing to them that are sick, Lord. Father, them that are weary, dear Father, I pray they be strengthened of our God. Open the windows of heaven, Father, and shower blessings, Father, over their lives. Blessings that they cannot even be able to contain and rebuke the devourer in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.